Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, General Otz. And today, I am joined by... Nick. Yes, and we're playing some more Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil. Uh, I have fixed a number of issues that plagued the last live stream, most notably the fact that the chat didn't show up. Uh, that was quite aggravating. Evidently, YouTube keeps updating their little chat box. But, I tested it, and it should work. Hopefully. Oh, and speaking of YouTube, another adocalypse, courtesy of Vox, taking down channels left and right, some that have absolutely nothing to do with politics to begin with. Including Streamlabs for a while. Because that makes sense. I mean, when you, when you think of, like, super political channels, you think of Streamlabs. I mean, you know, I mean, the free dissemination of information, that is inherently political. Yes, because it's evil, it's wrong, it goes against the narrative, and, you know, only the approved narrative is what matters. Yep, we can't have that. And hello, Techstorm, and hello, Fox Hill, and hello, Shyboy1992. Don't eat you awful. Oh, so did you ever play uh, Resurrection or Evil, uh, Rain? Yes, I have. Uh, did you play the PC version or the uh, Xbox? I played the PC version, because back then I was making side income, building rigs for people. Not bad. Yeah, I did not actually play the PC version until, uh, like, 2010 or something along those lines. Because I only ever had the Xbox version, and the Xbox version, in my opinion, is slightly better than the PC version in that, as you can see on screen, we actually have a tactical light on this pistol. Oh my god! It's like the future, man! I think it's in your rails, who would have guessed it? And what actually reminds me of Predator 2, where they had like the, the lasers and like the lights on the things. Which for 1990... 90? I think it was 1990 that movie came out, or was it 92? I think it was 91, I'm not entirely sure though. So, 1991, that was actually kind of a rare thing. The whole idea of like attaching things to like handguns or even rifles is a fairly recent concept in general. Yes, yeah, back then the only known police department to ever use, you know, lasers on firearms. Oddly enough, what back then was LAPD signing a contract with Surefire for lasers on their shotguns. The, the shotgun in general seems to have kind of fallen out of favor with like everyone for whatever reason. Eh, flavor of the month with the whole, you know, Mark 18 style carbine, the short barreled. Which is fine, but that being said, there's a lot, a lot of good to be said for a shotgun. Uh, one moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm being jawed again. I shall return momentarily. What happened? As for the Cyber Demon, I don't know if I prefer the Doom Eternal one or the previous Doom, because previous Doom, while not being you know, true to Doom, it was actually pretty well done. Pretty well illustrated and mocked up in 3D. The new, or should I say, old Cyber Demon does look true to the original games, but at a cost. I mean... Okay, back then, and I have since... Hold on, I'll be back again. <laughs> Life, ladies and gentlemen. It never ends! <sighs> the complexities of life, they do go marching on. That is true. Watching from Detroit, eh? Just be sure to be careful. <sighs> I got a rubber cup. Did they ever build that statue? I wonder. I don't know. There's supposed to be a Robocop statue, and that just sounds awesome. Oh, poor Robocop. It had a grand total of, like, a movie, and then all the others were shitty. That had some good comics. Well, yeah. Although one comic in particular that I'll never forget, because it was absolutely abhorrent, even the title was stupid, Robocop vs. the Terminator. Now, it's not the one you're thinking of. It's one that came out of many, many years later. Robocop vs. Terminator, Kill Human. No, that's not a typo. That literally was the title. And it was a grand total of nothing. Literally nothing was actually achieved in the comic. 
And basically John Connor dies, Robocop dies, everybody dies, and literally nothing is solved. It's kind of implied that like Robocop is like being controlled by Skynet, but literally it is a completely and totally plotless comic. Sounds like somebody cashed in. Uh, could have been. It's just, it was like the worst comic I have... Well, okay, it's the worst comic that I actually wanted to like that I've ever read. Obviously there's much worse, but it's like... Uh, there are people who say that Frank Miller is bad, Lincora. Um, Frank Miller can actually write a fairly decent comic, because the original Robocop vs. The Terminator was pretty good. That and, you know, Dark Knight 1 and 2 were good, so... Well, there's that too. Linkara is generally full of it. I mean, you're... He wrote the freaking Lightbringer, and he's going to be the judge of what's good. <laughs> really? Wasn't that the one where, like, somebody got raped and then became, like, some kind of superhero or something? Or some kind of... Oh, yeah. It's screwed up on so many levels. I mean, cool. It was some kind of weird thing like that. Also, you got to love the uh, 15 FPS here. Like, this expansion was just pushing that Xbox past wherever... It past its limits. Cause I this guess it, expansion was pushing PCs past its limits in this age. I, see, I, I didn't know that. So it's like, I'm surprised it runs it as well as it does then. Now, for me, Doom 3 had better graphics than Half-Life 2. Uh, I never was all that impressed with the Source engine. So, when it comes to like Half-Life 2 being like the greatest thing game of the year all years, it's like, also, we're playing Arkanoid because when you're on Mars during a demonic invasion, sometimes you just need to relax. As for the pistol being based on something, yeah, the handle is sort of based off of the Blade Runner pistol, but it it's not really based off of anything. I wouldn't think. It's not like... Ah, fuck it. I never particularly good at Arkanoid anyway, much less with a controller. That is definitely a game you need a mouse for. Or, if possible, a spinner controller. That could work, too. Although, I've never actually used one of those. Eh, it's just a potentiometer with a knob. That potential, You know, I'm actually making a joke about that in one of the... in, in the uh, next review. Just because that is the silliest name I have ever heard. Well, I mean, not ever heard, but one of the silliest things I've ever heard. Is it sounds fake! Potentiometer? It's like, come on! You just made that one up. Yeah, it may sound like it, but no, it's it's a real thing. I mean, I've built a Tempest controller for my Atari Jaguar with one. <laughs> if you want, I'll take photos. Well, I'll, I'll take your word for it, because it'd just be a mass of, like, wires. Uh, let's see here. Have you considered streaming a modern version such as the Ultimate HD? Uh, Splatburgers, I'm going to be doing the uh, perfected Doom 3 version of Resurrection of Evil. And if there isn't a perfected version of Resurrection of Evil, then yeah, it will be Ultimate HD. And hello, Epic Jason. Uh, Black Hawk Down, Death of Force, using pick reels. Uh, the earliest uses. Hmm. Now that would have been what, 2004? Black Hawk Down? Uh, well, here's the thing. Operation Gothic Serpent, what it's based off of, happened in, let's say, 1994? Oh, okay, I'm like a decade off. Wait, but remember, pre-SOCOM Block 1, so there weren't that many Picatinny Rail accessories. Crap, crap, crap. This is why the double barrel works so well. Do I blow him up? Ah, oh, I didn't get to blow him up. The Battle of Mogadishu was... The closest thing to a Picatinny Rail accessory you had really was Wilcox aim point mounts and scope mounts, and that was it. How long has that aim point been around? Well, they didn't use the M68 CCO back then. They used uh, the commercial off-the-shelf aim points. Oh. I cannot imagine how much those must have been back then, because that would have been a very new concept for the time. Well, aim point's been around since the 80s. It's, it was mostly a hunting site beforehand. Yeah, that is a good question. You know, like, when did the red dot become, you know, such a common thing? Because I remember, you know, growing up, pretty much you had scopes, and that was it. Yeah, about 88 is when red dot really started taking off for, you know, brush hunting. But, like I say, it's 
back then, no picket any mount. It was you had weaver rails, and that was really about the max. Well, semi strike that because you had the HKP cap system, but that required its own specialized set of rings. So. Hmm. Frankly, I don't know if our so have been somewhat difficult. And yes, Jason, they did use aim point three thousand. Uh, let's see. I love how, like, you know, Doom Dude back here just kind of walks up here and says absolutely nothing. Also, her glasses look kind of silly, just to be honest. Alright. They look like safety glasses more, more than anything else. Now, sadly, we never really see Doom Dude again. Also, you gotta love that epic, you know, like, I don't even know what that's supposed to be on the back of his, like, armor. The shoulder pads. Pauldrons. There we go. It's like he's trying to outdo regular Space Marines. M1 Grand on Mars. Might have a lot of overpenetration. And hello, Turok Fire Seed. Uh, let's see. The single advantage source head over the Doom 3 engine. Is that the physics? Yeah, but see, the physics engine, that's only one tiny aspect of the game, you know? Yeah, it's just Havoc physics. I mean, Second Life at the same time was using the same thing. Let's see. Oh, the Havoc engine? I don't even know. Had better weapons than Doom 3. A uh, better weapon sway. Honestly, though, I've never liked Half Life 2. I, I just. I just don't like it. Uh, when, when I finally review it, I'm gonna like just completely savage it. I might have to like do that review with someone who actually does like it though. Might do like a collab with that because I'm actually collabing with a guy who really likes uh, Rogue Squadron 2. And uh, Rain is also. Uh, see, like, if you thought you were gonna get out of like cameoing Rain, well, I just kind of screwed you in that one. It's also gonna <laughs> cameo in that as well. Uh, I don't, <clears throat> at this point, I don't know what your opinion on that game is, but for me, it's like, it's not bad, but it's not very good either. I basically I've got, I've got some things to say about it, though mostly more about, I'm not going to spoil what I'm going to have to say about it, but I'm going to end up covering one thing y'all guys probably aren't going to cover. Hmm. Then that should be particularly interesting. I'm going to have to, like, find a way to not have the review be, like, 40 minutes long. Well, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Well, no, because I say a lot, the other guy says a lot, you know. And, uh, speaking of the other guy, uh, I'm not going to spoil who that is just yet, seeing as it's sort of their debut, but, um, I was trying to figure out how to make a GIF, or a GIF, however you pronounce it, and I still can't quite figure that out. Because basically I just need a picture to make, I need a, there's a picture I need that has to have its mouth moving, and I'm not really sure how to do that. And I'm sure it, not sure. I can't imagine it's that difficult, but I just have not really uh, been able to get it to work right. Uh, well, skeptical Rowan, just uh, friend me on Discord. Because it is kind of interesting to have you know two different perspectives going into one review, especially like a game that some that especially like a game that I don't like, kind of contrasting uh, that with someone who actually does like it. Because some of the stuff I don't like, they do. So, it, 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 it shows a nice dichotomy, because Rogue Squadron 2 isn't a bad game, it's just, I don't really like it that much, and Half-Life 2, I guess, isn't a bad game, I just really, really dislike it. It's a fair and balanced thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, you got a new computer, Turok. Very nice. And... Trying to be thick like Master Chief. Pfft. Well, they kind of did make Master Chief's back bits really huge in Halo 4 for whatever reason. I'll admit that, that was one... Oh, uh, okay. My question is this, though. Uh, if it's that obvious, why don't, like, the Covenant just, like, aim for that? Of course, then oh, again... it's also really well armored. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, one thing I do find kind of funny about Halo 4, you know, I... when it comes to Halo 4, I don't dislike it like some people do, but... I will admit it is kind of silly that, like, the super advanced Forerunner are basically using, you know, laser shotguns that work exactly like shotguns, laser SMGs that work exactly like regular SMGs. It's just like, really? 
That's their future space weapons. Uh, oh yeah, Doom Eternal. Oh, Doom Eternal. That is something that's kind of interesting. I am trying not to get excited by it. But I gotta admit, it does look like it's not gonna be that bad. It's and Tech Storm, if you're talking underslung shotguns, um, you're not gonna like the price. I mean, you have two options. You have Knight's Armament, which does work, but you can't free float your barrel, and it's heavy slash expensive. And then you have a Canadian company called, uh, oh, shoot, I'm trying to think, uh, Lockhart Tactical, sorry, brain fart, which is considerably more cost effective, but you still have to fill out a $200 tax stamp. You'll be shipping in the mount and then buying essentially a Serbu Super Shorty and applying the $200 tax stamp to that. What I find kind of funny about all that is like, you go through all that effort, and really, what do you get? Yeah, pretty useful for breaching doors and, you know, oh crap moments, but at the very least, the Lockhart Tactical shotgun system can actually be used like the Remington MCS. You can take it off of the AR or whatever rifle you put it on, and apply the quick detach stock, and you actually have a usable shotgun. Which sounds cool, but like, since when, well, like, would a normal person ever really need such a thing, though? Mm, need? No. What? Maybe. Yeah, it's just like, that sounds cool, but it's like all the st steps you have to do just to get it. And it's like, at the end of the day, you've got something that's cool, but you never could. It would have been better, at least in my opinion, to save the money for like more ammo for a more practical gun. Uh, generally, but like I say, we live in a nation of wants, not a nation of needs. If That's true. you really want it, you can go for it. It is true. Speaking of saving money, pretty much for the rest of this year, I'm just going to be shooting 22 LR. Because uh, 22 LR is very cheap. Uh, it's not nearly Thankfully as... Actually, it is. Yeah, I remember, like, didn't it get really expensive once? Like, it got yeah, very expensive and very rare, you know, all through, you know, hate to get political, but all throughout the Obama regime. No, like, I guess I don't really remember that for whatever reason. I must have been focused on something else, but like, how much did it get? Or I might have already uh, had like a bunch like... A box of 500? It got up to about 48 bucks. Really? Damn. Yeah. Uh, to put that in perspective, actually the price is still pretty high. It was $25 now, but... Uh, not as cheap as it, as it was at its prime, but eh, it's still not terrible. Yeah, but it's still cheaper than, like, uh, what, uh, uh, like, in range is kind of disdainful of uh, 22LR. It's saying, like, you can get a box of nines for the price of 22LR. It's like, well, not really. You can get a box of nines for, like, $18, but you can still get more 22s for that price. Intel Xeon NVIDIA GPU? Not too bad. Uh, you like drunk streaming? I have not actually even heard of that until now. Uh, I assume that's a popular thing, but I don't really see it. Auto farms have ammo counters. Some did, like around World War II, but... Uh, blood Fresh Supply, that's planned for next year. Uh, B-Wing and Glass Marine. Not bad either. Oh, yeah. Outrider. I actually got the Outrider not too long ago. Mossberg Mod Kit. Is that how I get mm. the uh, mags? Oh, well, there's the Bullpup Kit for Mossbergs, which actually works pretty well. The Bullpup's Unlimited Kit, I can say, I do like. Oh, yeah. The, uh, like, super uh, futuristic-looking thing that was used in the 80s for a lot of futuristic firearms. Oh no, that's the original Mossberg uh, bullpup kit, which was okay, but really not quite as nice as the bullpup unlimited kit. Uh, I don't think I've seen that. At least I'm not aware of it. Well, did I really just miss that door? Well, I am a genius. Uh, let's see, blood source port. Oh yeah, and hello, uh, Tim McAndrew. And it's going as well as it ever does. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say the Halo 1 is particularly overrated. Uh, I can see why some would say that, but I found it to be quite good. And I've never even heard of Trailer Park Boys. 
I have no clue what that is. And I, I'm just gonna judge from the title. I'm assuming it's a bunch of idiots who live in a trailer park. Yeah, but it's actually pretty funny. Oh. Like, is there a plot? It's the. It. Best way I can put it is think Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but for a grown-up generation. Hmm. And they're not obsessed with jawbreakers. It's mostly about getting money and you know making their life better. Okay. So is it like animated or something? No, it's it's live action. Okay. Also, this must be an absolutely just horrible sewer here. You gotta have a fucking environmental suit to get to not die. Oh, and just look at that frame rate. We're getting like 20 frames or 20 FPS at this point. I don't remember being this bad, to be perfectly honest. Although, I, I, I have not played this version of the game in a long time. The PC version, of course, you know, it's 60 FPS all throughout, but like, damn, I don't remember being this bad. Uh, it wasn't always 60 FPS all the way throughout. Back then, on pure correct hardware, you'd have spikes. Hmm. I did not have a computer that could even consider running this. Hell, the computer I had back then, when this came out, couldn't even run Code War 2, so... Yeah. Eventually, but strangely, if you know how to hack it, you can actually get Doom 3, not the expansion pack, to run on, you know, a Voodoo 3. Not well. Not well at all. In fact, it looks like hammered butt. <laughs> well, my question is this. Why, why exactly does the expansion pack run so shitty, then? It's running the same engine. It's graphics. the same engine, but it's also running more detailed, larger environments, and more polygons. Uh... It's like... Just looking at it here, it doesn't look that much better, but... No, but your length of draw is different, your culling distance is different. Oh crap, I need to like... Oh, I should probably just use the building artifact. Uh, let's see here. Are you picking up the helmet? It's not the BFG edition. You know, I never even liked the idea of the BFG edition, to be perfectly honest. Uh, let's see. In 64 frame rate, it's not that bad. Uh, Dark Forces 1, Tiny Fighter. I don't know what he's talking about. People get Doom 3 to 1, run on Windows 98. I don't even know how you do that. Uh, like I say, you can, if you know how to hack it, you can patch it using the uh, 3DFX wrapper and get it to run on essentially a Voodoo 3 in Windows 98. It's not easy, it's not recommended, and it looks horrible. And the fact that it's possible at all. I gotta admit, that lighting there does look really cool with them having the uh, head mounted flashlight. You know, it makes sense that the frame rate is now literally almost in single digits. But it's actually pretty impressive for this time. Now, I think. Where was that? Jason Armstrong is asking, how long have we known each other? I think you. We. Uh, Rain and I met in a really. Well, I wouldn't say really weird, but. In a, in a non-standard way, let's say. Uh, he sent me a graphics card, I think... Is that 2015 or 16? I don't remember. I want to say it was 2015. Okay, so since then. Although we didn't like start really talking until, I think, 2017? I think? Maybe? I don't I think. I'm not sure. We didn't start talking steadily until like 2017, yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, that's a sizable amount of time, actually. In fact, you along with Rage are some of my lo longest of termed friends, believe it or not. Oh, crap, crap, crap! Because, as I've said in other streams, like, I didn't really get, like, consistent friends until 2010 at the earliest. It's like, I would talk to people on, like, a short-term basis, and then they'd go away, you know, stuff like that. So it's like, it's a whole new world of possibilities. Tell you I made a video about... A video about what? Oh crap, 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 crap. Oh, I'm dead. I am so dead. Yep, there we go. Uh, now I am going to be reviewing uh, Dark Forces 1. No, not Dark Forces 1. Dark Forces 2. Uh, next month. I actually started working on that. Speaking of voodoo, I'm actually uh, using a voodoo wrapper to get it to work. And I swear, I got it to work so much easier back in 2013 when I did my LG, uh, CGR review of it. 
it, literally all I had to do was just get a patch for the disc version, and it worked just fine. Now, for whatever reason, it's like I had to get that, and it still doesn't run that well. And maybe it's my memory, you know, like, kind of crapping out on me, but I could have swore. I could have swore I was running that at 60 FPS back in 2013. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I'm getting, at best, 30 FPS with that thing. Well, remember, there's been a lot of software changes since then. I mean, there's games I could, I could run at 120 frames per second just fine, like Revenant. At, I'm having a hard time running now without glitches. Well, that is aggravating because Dark Force 2 is a really good game. I think the reason why it's not as well remembered as uh, uh, Jedi Knight 2 and Jedi Academy is just because it is so hard to get running. And getting it running well is not easy either. Like, I'm actually trying to play it as vanilla as possible. Now, I am running in 1080p, which is definitely not vanilla, but I didn't even apply. The, there, there's a mod. You, there's a bunch of mods you can get, but one you can get where you actually uh, can have high detail graphics on all the time. Now, since Dark Forces 2 came out in 1997, you know the graphics hardware at that time wasn't particularly amazing, so distant textures wouldn't be rendered or would be rendered in like like extremely compressed uh, so it's a mod that fixes that uh, I didn't know I was actually talking to somebody at work today about this uh, the concept of the mouse scroll wheel is actually a fairly recent concept I did not remember that at all yeah in the early 90s we did not have that in fact we really didn't have it a lot until the 2000s so it's like in uh Jedi Knight 1, uh, you don't even have access to the scroll wheel. It makes you look up or down. So, yeah. That is always kind of confusing. Like, you go to, like, switch to a different weapon, and you end up looking straight up. Oh, crap. Really? You could have spawned it behind me. Uh, soundtrack to that 1998 3D fighting game. Bio. Oh, Bio Freaks. I remember that. Vaguely. Yeah, funny thing is, it was never fully released the arcade. It was only released in, arc, you know, arcade test. Huh. I guess at that point, though, when that came out in the late 90s, arcades were pretty much dead. Not really. I mean, I worked with Namco up until 2001. Hmm. And they were dying. They weren't dead. Well, no, I guess it just... Midway just didn't have the budget to do that then. Didn't do well in arcade tests. They basically stated that you know it didn't earn enough. So uh, they just decided to say, okay, let's take the assets and turn it into a console game. I remember playing it a grand total of maybe three times on the N sixty four. I don't remember if it was good, bad, or indifferent. I just remember that like it had a really ridiculous story where like corporations took over the world and they had like the Bio Freak tournament to like determine who won all the money? I don't I don't remember anything about it other than something than that, like one or two of the stages. It's it's probably been over like two decades since I've last seen it. Or last saw it, whichever is the uh, proper grammar. It's a live stream, we don't have that proper grammar. Well, at least not according to more modern conventions. And... and tech, why not an underslung Mossberg mod kit? It's because if you're not going with uh, Model 88, if you're going with a Model 500 or 590, you have to figure out a way to actually activate, deactivate the safety. It's tang mounted. It's not, you know, mounted right by the trigger guard. Which I kind of, I kind of like that about the Mossberg. Although the uh, cross bolt safety has kind of grown on me over the years. Uh, both have their uses. If you're using a pistol grip, then the cross bolt safety makes more sense. If you're using a traditional, you know, either bird's head or English style grip, then the tang safety is king. Uh, let's see, too many games in Oaks, PA, Pennsylvania. Uh, I may have gotten a better job, but it's not that good. Yeah, it's trust me, I'd love to go to too many games, but. Right now, I'm trying to get a car back up and running. So, yeah, you know, actually flying to another state, especially Pennsylvania of all places, is not an easy prospect. I will say this, though. for There's one arcade that will get me to go, even though I really don't like the city at all. 
that will get me to go back to Chicago, and that's Galloping Ghost. No, I haven't even heard of that. That's an awesome arcade. I, that's the only reason you get to go back to Chicago outside of the food. Yeah, the only thing I know about Chicago cuisine is the uh, Chicago-style pizza, which isn't even my favorite kind of pizza, so I literally have no reason to go there. Uh, the Polish sausage and yeah, the Polish food there generally is just awesome. That, kind of... that being said, though, you can make Polish food yourself. It's not that hard. Yeah, speaking of which, I was actually thinking about that today as I uh, made a birthday cake for my mother. Uh, a cake that you get at the store is never quite as good as the one you make at home. Well, if you're good at it, I should say. And, like, cakes have gone up, like, to a ridiculous extent. It's like, if you want, like, a slice of, like, fucking cheesecake, you gotta pay something like five dollars, and it's never really good. At least to me it isn't. Well, it depends what type you're getting. If you're getting anything other like anything under Sierra Lee grade, it's not gonna be that great. That being said, a cheesecake actually isn't that hard to make. I can teach you how to make that. Uh, I've got some recipes for it. I just haven't done it yet. Because I would like to make my own at some point. Today I just made a lemon cake with lemon icing, and the icing is so perfect that it's literally illegal in New York State. Ah, uh, no, New York City. Because New York State is different from New York from New York City, I suppose. Yeah, but NYC sets the rules and laws for the majority of the state to be the seat. Yeah, see, that kind of sucks for all the people who don't actually live in that city. So, like, their vote literally doesn't matter. Now, this is why we have Electoral College, folks. Oh, but I heard that was the Raycast. Because that's why you don't use Raycast, you use Redream, and then everybody loves it. Uh, simulators go, both are fine. Uh, you know, cheese I'm cake. more of a DDMU fan, but that's because I like OEM hardware. Chocolate currant cake with whipped cream and printable ed 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 edible images? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Go go look it up if you get the chance. It's kind of cool. All right. Uh, custom made cake from Wise. Rogue Squadron front cover. Holy crap! That sounds great. Pumpkin chocolate cookies. I'm not a big fan of chocolate, to be perfectly honest. Under slug SG because it's a bit and can use it making better. Well, I guess you could use it, but on what? I'm not really sure. Well, here's the thing. Uh, the quote-unquote fake grenade launchers actually do have their uses. You can use them to launch you know, munitions such as rescue flares for you know, obvious applications, uh, smoke grenades, things like that. As for underslung 12-gauge, uh, I hate to break it to you, but getting dust buster rounds is going to be tough for you. It's not impossible, but it's going to be tough. It's not going to be cheap. Um, you, you never breach a door with anything. You, know, not, you don't breach it with lethal load. You breach it with dust busters. And the reason why is you don't know what, what's on the other side. You really want to take the risk of killing what's on the other side? So, yeah. Although, now that I think of it, you know, like in, in terms of a video game context, like if you had one of those uh, flare launchers... It's like, well, like, you get a flare launcher, so, like, you can call it an airstrike, man. It'll be awesome. The only time I've ever used flares and smoke was not calling an airstrike. It was getting my butt out of a situation I would have died in. No, oh, well, that works, too. But see, now it's like, you want to, it's like, I want to ask, but then it's like, well, if you were going to tell me, you would have told me. Well, I can tell you right now if you want. It's basically, I had a breakdown of an airboat in the middle of a friggin' swamp. Radio is barely working. Airplane's overhead. You launch that flare. Hmm. Well, that works, too. But it's not quite as cool as, like, calling it an airstrike, I guess. Oh, yeah. Not quite as explosive, expensive, or awesome, but, yeah, you know, saves my life. So I'm not gonna look at a gift horse in the mouth. I suppose that might... That might be good, I guess. But you know, like, you should have like launched at the plane so like the plane crashed and blew up. Uh, that might not, that might be frowned upon. Good luck doing that with a handheld flare. Hey, Homer did it in The Simpsons once. <laughs> I 
Okay, good. That isn't a bloody loading door. Sure flechette? Uh, no, flechettes aren't essentially nails. They're basically... That's way to put it. Darts. Hey, you! Over here. hey somebody who's actually alive. Dude, why don't you have any eyes? He doesn't need them where he's going. Yeah, he's going to be going to uh, the feminist parade. No, the women's march. There we go. <laughs> you just threw him into a scenario worse than hell. Yeah. Uh, all those protests and marches that you see these days is like, is there anything more pointless? The movement behind the protest. Well, that, that too, but it's like, is there anything more... All the various protest movements are, are like... I want to say they're hilarious, but people take them so seriously. It's like... And if you ask them why they're there, not one of them have a clue. That's because they're drones. They don't think on their own. They only think as a herd. Yeah, see, like the poor girl, like, you know, oh, look, look, we got a little more intelligence than that. A little. It's like the board go to like assimilate a bunch of people. It's like, oh, um, yeah, we're just gonna keep moving on because uh, we don't really need these people in our collective. We're not that desperate yet. You know, if the Borg actually assimilated them, things would actually be a little more peaceful. <laughs> like, unless you genuinely present yourself as a hostile threat to the Borg, they don't generally attack. Yeah, so they like. Assimilate like half the earth, and it's just these people just wandering around having no clue what to do because the Borg's not not even gonna bother with them. Uh, bird with buckshot behind it. I think they'd be kind of like redundant at that point. Uh, buck and ball has been done before, and it has its uses. Bird shot with buck, you're not gonna get the flight pattern you want. I trust me. It, either you put the buck shot in front, in which case you have offset your load, which the shot cut going to come out wobbling, which is going to throw your shot off, or you put it at the back and you're going to offset your load again, instead of being wildly unpredictable, it's going to ain't go up. Because of the tail end drag. I've actually shot, this has nothing to do with that, but it has to do with shotgun shells. Um, I actually have shot a single flechette shell. And it had an interesting sound to it, and it hit the paper target, and that's about it. I don't know if flechettes are really as good as science fiction from the 80s would lead you to believe. No, they're they're useful in places like underbrush. And that's really about it. Um, in Vietnam, mostly what was heavily used is number one, double lot, number one, and number four buck. And usually with the special forces, it was used with the spreaders. Which thankfully you can get an improved version of now. I feel like it's one of those things like... Why would you? Because half the time, if you're lucky, you have access to, like, steel, but most of the time you're, like, stuck with just paper, so. Dragon slug? Uh, it's basically a phosphorus-coated slug. It's gimmicky. Yeah, it sounds like it. Although I just realized that probably does make me sound like a fuzz, like, who needs this? I'm not saying Come like out. you... You're just not seeing the application of it, which is fine, because most people don't see the application of certain loads. And a lot of loads you really have no use, like uh, the old fire quest, uh, Ma Macho Gaucho. Mm, sounds good on paper, always comes apart right before it hits target. Like, what is that supposed to even be? Uh, it's basically uh, piano wire between two pieces of lead, bo lead ball shot. It's... It, not quite as stout as two slugs, but they're stacked back to back, and if it would ever stay together, it would actually be pretty useful because it's a lacerating piece of wire flying at high velocity. Hmm. Speaking of weird rounds, uh, InRange did test the duplex round that evidently existed in the early 1960s, and evidently it was not bad. No, if it was ever in implemented into, like, say, an LMG, or let me rephrase this, a GPMG, 7.62 NATO, it would actually be quite good, but being counters. 
Yeah. Evidently, it uh, was pretty difficult to actually manufacture. I'm actually yeah, playing this... difficult. It's just expensive. Oh. Uh, and if you're trying to make, like, trillions of rounds, yeah, that would be somewhat difficult to make cheap. And Elmer Fudd. Now, for those who do not know, Fudd is actually a uh, pejorative term used for a certain type of gun owner that has no problem with, like, ARs being, like, banned. So long as they keep their, you know, wooden steel hunting rifle. Problem is that, you know, if you give in a little, they're going to take everything. Yeah, and it's still just a brand of people trying to tell you what you can have and not have. And it's like, well, who are you to tell me? And honestly, you know, a wooden steel hunting rifle is not, like, worthless. It's actually quite useful in some applications. Yeah, it's... The thing is, we shouldn't be having an argument about what types of guns are good or bad because they're not. They're all tools. They're all good. They're all bad. It's you can have your preferences. That's great. I dig me some, you know, classic H and H Safari guns. That being said, that's not going to stop me from using, you know, whatever semi-automatic rifle of decent capacity I can get my hands on to defend myself and my loved ones. Now that being said. There was somebody I knew once, many years ago, that really hated the idea of the uh, uh, of the elephant gun. Like, who needs an elephant gun? It's like, really? Really? They having even... worked on them <laughs> and having used them in, you know, hog hunts, they're surprisingly useful. Oh, damn, I used that just as he went invincible. Also, they spelled Berserk wrong. Just saying. Yeah. Now, one thing I always find kind of funny about boss fights in just about any game is the fact that, well, they always have to have that weak point. So, like, let's say, you know, you're you're Satan, right? You're trying to create a new demon to, like, you know, kill people. Why would you design said demon to have an obvious, you know, weak point that's this big thing in their chest that... They're utterly invulnerable to everything except for that one spot that you can just walk up and shoot. I'm, I'm just saying, it's like, evidently Satan is not the uh, best engineer. Hey, he's working with limited supplies. I mean, look at us humans. We get tons of vulnerabilities. Every one of our joints, our neck. <laughs> That's true. Speaking of the old uh, Satin, uh, I actually finished a book this week that was quite interesting. Uh, basically, it starts out as your traditional uh, disaster novel, but then it basically became this sort of like paranormal thriller. Uh, shit, I am so dead. So it starts out with like, uh, there's this massive crustal shift where basically the northern hemisphere becomes a southern hemisphere and basically all of Europe is pretty much wiped out, all of the northern United States is wiped out, and Antarctica actually ends up uh, uh, thawing out. Now, this in and of itself, and I died. That in and of itself is a cool concept, uh, but uh, so humanity wants to colonize Antarctica. Because now there's a bunch of displaced people because, well, Half the U.S. is now uninhabitable, literally uninhabitable, because it's the same temperature as Antarctica. And so everybody wants to move to uh, the now thought Antarctica. Well, surprise! Nephilim! And dinosaurs. So, that, that doesn't really come out of left field, because I kind of knew it from, like, the uh, uh, synopsis. But it's still a cool concept. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate the Nephilim are in the book, but they're still pretty cool. Because they're, b shit, basically uh, demons in this. They, got, they can fly, they're invulnerable, and crap, crap. <laughs> Give me the double barrel. There we go. I do not, I'm not even sure if like the Nephilim are even really in the Bible, to be perfectly honest. I'm gonna say, I'll take my chances with the T-Rex. Uh, At least yeah. I can kill it. 
Well, you can kill an F-Home in the book, uh, so long as you have an RPG and shoot it in the head. It's actually kind of an interesting little tie-in to uh, the David versus Goliath story. Basically, in the book, that event actually happened, which I think it could. I think there's some historical evidence for that actually happening in real life, except uh, Goliath was not actually a giant. He was just a really, really tall, you know, guy. But in the book, he actually was a legitimate giant. Gets shot, gets hit in the head with a uh, slingshot. Oh yeah, that's a weapon nobody ever remembers, for whatever reason. Uh, well, it's about like the Atlatl. Nobody remembers that either. Which is kind of interesting, because those are some really dangerous weapons, like a sling. It's a, literally a piece of leather that you put a stone in it, twirl it around, and that can, like, fucking kill people. Easily. So, you know, it's like, you would think people would talk about that more, but I guess it's just not, you know, as cool as, like, a sword or an axe. You know, when you think of, like, Odin Battle Axe, you don't think of, like, like, uh, Wolfgar Slingstone. Actually, it sounds kind of cool, at least to me. Oh, I'm probably gonna get killed by this guy again. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I should probably u actually use some sort of tactic instead of just, like, running up and trying to hit him with the shotgun. Yeah, he's gonna kill me again, I bet. No, I'm not trying to stream. I actually don't die nearly this much. At least that's what I'm gonna say. Even if it's not 100% accurate. There's the thing in the blobber there. Organize a trip where you physically met each other. Where's the rock out? That would be very difficult. Just because I think that Rock Island auction house is like, what, in Maine? Yep. Yeah, it wouldn't be that difficult to Greyhound it. Hmm. That or... If well, you're you're actually closer to uh, an Amtrak than I am, so you could you could take the train. Really? I don't even know that. Should That'd be a lot easier. I'm more comfortable. Yeah, I didn't even know I was even close to something like that. Oh crap! He's gonna probably end up killing me or not. Just keep running. That's a possibility. Although honestly, if we were gonna do a meetup, we should actually should think about doing it at some point since we have been talking for what like four years at this point. Uh, of course, so, yeah, but I'd rather go do something a little more fun than just watching a bunch of people buy guns that neither one of us could afford, even if we pooled our money. So, yeah. And the shotgun from Phantasm is awesome. Not super practical, but rule of cool. Uh, well, there is the Kiapa triple threat, so... Red Foreman or Al Bundy? See, that's one of those things where I don't think they'd actually end up fighting. Although, you realize with the there, there would be a significant age difference between the two of them, though. So, by the time Al Bundy is Al Bundy, Red Foreman would be, like, what? In his 80s or something? No, because uh, Red Foreman was uh, pushing near 50s in the 70s show, and Al Bundy was pushing his 40s in Married with Children, which... If it was early married with children, they they would probably end up being drinking partners. Yeah, I could see that happening. Of course, you know, that does bring up an interesting concept, though. The future of, of a sitcom. Not like the future, like, out of universe, but in universe. Like, how long would Red Foreman actually live? Because if he was in his 50s in the 1970s, would he still be alive today? Or would he just be really, really, really old? I don't think he'd be alive today, but he would have been kicking up until probably like 2002, so. Mm. Al Bundy should theoretically be alive. Well, the actor still is. Well, yeah, but I mean like the character in universe. Now that's something I, I have thought about, like the future of The Simpsons, as in like what would happen to the characters in that? Because they're just kind of like stuck in like the uh, the same ages. Like, what if they actually realistically aged? Like, Bart would be like almost in his forties at this point. Homer might. Have actually heard Maggie speak? That's one of those things. Like, they really kind of milked that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Ah, oh, goddamn it! Okay, I got at least one more hell time. Crap. 
Back, but... Actually, I'm gonna save. Even if I'm gonna screw myself, I'm gonna save anyway. Uh, let's see, most recent updates for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I'm probably not gonna end up playing that, just because knowing me, with how little time I have now just to sit down and play a game, uh, that's gonna be a big game. I haven't even finished, you know, Witcher 1. And I know that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be a long-ass game. Because it is, you know, a CD Projekt Red, after all. Well, it will be, but that being said, if it's written anything like what Pond Smith has done for his past, you know, expansions to the series, it, it's going to be kind of semi-episodic. You'll have break-off points. Hmm. Still, though, it's just... I know me these days, when it comes to, like, RPGs, may maybe not, seeing as how it's actual, you know, science fiction, so we'll just have to see. Uh, but Keanu Reeves, as I think you mentioned his name, was like... Johnny Silverhand. Yeah, there you go. See, I have no idea who that is, because I never got, I never even knew hardly anything about Cyberpunk 2077 until the uh, Spoonie videos. Uh, let's just say he's one of the bigger movers and shakers in the universe. and He ended the fourth corporate war in a rather explosive way. Hmm. Drop of the nuke, eh? Maybe. Though, that being said, right before the end of the fourth corporate war, he was gunned down pretty hard. But nobody ever found the body. So Now hey. we know what happened. So if you don't find the body, it doesn't count. Boober Shooter Looter Lands? Never even heard of that. Oh yeah, William Gibson's Alien 3. Uh, I actually got both the comic and the audio drama. I've not listened or read to either, read either one of them yet. Uh, just really haven't had the time to just, you know, devote to actually enjoying both of those things. I do plan on doing a review of potentially both next year, depending on time. That's the thing. It all depends on how much time I have. Because I'm constantly doing crap these days. The Handsome Collection, don't care about Borderlands, never particularly liked it. Uh, green A-Wing Fighter. And I think, well, Rain, I think you were in a Real Bad Dudes episode. I, I forget which one. But I think you were in one. I was. I did the recording for uh, Saturday and for Death of Some Salesman. And if we're gonna get the recording time right, there is the episode one re-edit, which mm, mm, I don't want to give away. <laughs> yeah, I saw the uh, script. So yeah, better you than me. That was an interesting watch, I'll put it that way. Yeah, I don't think it's going to really be much Aliens stuff getting released sadly anymore, just because, well, Gearbox has it, I think, and yeah. yeah. Well, yes and no. Um, Creative Assembly is making another Aliens game, but here's the downside. It's mobile. So, they're not actually making a game, then. They're just making, you know, a microtransaction. A cash cow, yeah. yeah. They're making a, uh, you know, money printer. But at least there is isolation. Isolation is awesome. And that's coming down next year. That is a perfect Halloween video to do. And this is actually a really impressive game. I forgot just how impressive Resurrection of Evil actually was. And we'll have the... Okay, who is she Uh, let's see. Uh, it was actually Rage who came up with the uh, Real Bad Dudes concept. Uh, I think he came up with that idea about two years ago? And it's just finding time to record and getting all, getting everyone's schedules, you know, working. Because that's the interesting thing about the internet. You can have multiple people from multiple states, from multiple time zones, and potentially even multiple countries coming together to make videos, but it's still very difficult and, like, for one person, it's like 3 in the morning. For another, it's like 7 at night. So actually getting everybody 
uh, recording at the same time is not an easy prospect. Uh, one of the casts, we actually had a fan editor from, I think it was Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I think like for him it was like really early in the morning, whereas like it was night for us. I almost forgot. I was actually part of the Moon Trap recording, which I gotta admit, I actually genuinely like that film still to this day. I, I'm glad I was a part of that. Uh, I don't remember much about that movie now. Was that the one with like the like they found a robot chick? She was like naked. Yes, that's the one thing I remember. She was like on some kind of spacecraft. Uh, basically. Lack of a better term, alien invasion based on the moon. Very much inspired the Strogue. Oh yeah, that one. Okay, the one that was kind of like um, virus, but better. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's frustrating. Is how hard it is to find a copy of Wolfen's? Check eBay. I found a whole bunch of them. In fact, I'm thinking about getting one of those for the review of that, just to have in the background. As for YouTube channels, mine's long since unused. Uh, I may come back to it, but right now I just don't have a viable camera. Hmm. Well, you can always just get a webcam. Yeah. Problem broke. Oh. Yeah, I can send you one if you uh, want one. Well, right now I'm trying to get this car back up and going, and from there, uh, get back into finding good work as opposed to side work. Yeah. Yeah, beauty cars. Although, the car I have now is quite good, so... Uh, for those of you who are looking for a good first car, or a car just to have... You know, a, car, a good work car... Uh, the Nissan Versa, at least the 2010 one, is excellent. Uh, great gas mileage. Uh, they're generally well constructed, so yeah. One thing I always like about small cars is the fact that they can fit just about anywhere. In, in fact, I actually forgot about this until just now. So, coming back from work today, you know, I'm on the freeway, freeway, blech, I'm getting onto the freeway, blech, I can't say way. Highway. There you go. The motorway, as the British would say. Um, there's this big truck coming off of my right. He's trying to get into my lane, and he does not see me at all. And he's still, he just keeps coming, I just kind of have to floor it. Uh, so I'm not literally crushed by the guy, but being in a small car... It's not a big deal, because... Oh, crap! And he still didn't die. Being in a small car, you know, th there's a lot more room for me to get past him than if I was in something a bit bigger. Also, I gotta complain about two things. Two things. Now, while I am indeed a native and very proud Texan, um, one aspect of Texan culture does annoy me. And that, of course, is the big truck. Now, I like big trucks, and I cannot lie. But, the people who drive them, some are good, most are bad. Most don't even know how to drive a big truck. Oh, it's really funny seeing them get stuck in mud. Uh, what isn't funny, though, is the fact that they do one of two things. They drive recklessly, or they or in the morning. Uh, I have to get up really early uh, to go to work. And so, in the morning, every big truck that comes by, well, maybe not everyone, but most of the big trucks that come by, they've got their fucking high beams on. Fuck those people. Because, I'm sorry, you don't need that much light when it's clearly... There's all these street lights around. Why are your high beams on? And another thing, another thing. This also happened last week. I'm going to complain about this. This is me complaining about going to work hour now. Okay? So, fucking Tuesday. Tuesdays are always shit, by the way. I don't know what it is about Tuesday, but they're almost always shit. And this Tuesday was no exception. I got stuck behind a train. Now, that's bad enough, right? And, like, this train is, like, inching along at, like, a mile per year. And, like, it straight up stops. It straight up stops. But then, but then, the person directly behind me has their high beams on the entire time. Now, that train was there so long, the sun actually came out. I mean, it, it's a weird concept, especially for me. But the sun actually comes out, and he still got his fucking high beams on. You do not need that much light when the sun is literally out! Why? Anyway, moving on. Stupid is, man. It's, it's just going to happen. <sighs> As for high beams, everybody, just use them when you're out in the country. Don't 
if you got you know street lights every 25 yards there's no need for it okay i'm not behind stuck behind a train okay it, you know it's fucking going along basically i was stuck waiting for a train we'll just say that how about that hey, i've been up since five in the morning and i'm doing my fake yell because if I do my real yell, I'm gonna like just completely rip my throat apart. God damn it! I blame the chat. Some named Cooter. Well, technically, the name Cooter is primarily used in different parts of the South. And it's uh, also used as a pejorative for a certain bit of the anatomy. That too. Uh, let's see here. Uh. Oh yeah, about uh, Wolfman. Wolfman, uh, Rage met Wolfman in Friday the 13th, and Wolfman was generally an entertaining guy in that, and then he was asked to be part of the podcast, and there you go. Friday the 13th, the game, I should say. Not Friday the 13th, the day. Well, it could have been on Friday the 13th, the day, we don't know. Yeah, that's true. And Vulcan, normally people don't name somebody like that legally. That's normally a nickname which is adopted, which is hilarious. Similar to Bubba, although Bubba's not nearly as bad as that. I've actually known several people named Dallas. Yes, there's some people have named their kids Dallas. I'm not really sure why. High gas station next to Lowe's hardware. Well, that would be hilariously uh, appropriate. None in Houston that I know of, none in Dallas, though there is a gas station real close to one here in Louisiana. I've never even heard of a high gas station, to be perfectly honest. There we go, finally got a goddamn med kit. Now, using that hell time was entirely pointless, but I did it anyway. And then I immediately wasted that by, like, running up at him with a uh, empty gun. See, that's one of the problems with the double-barreled shotgun. Very long reload times. Now, one thing I've often wondered, though, it's like, okay, you've got the double-barreled shotgun. Why do they not routinely have ejectors? They have the little extractors, but they don't have ejectors. Price. Well, yeah, but then, like, single-shot shotguns almost always have ejectors, though. Yeah, but you're talking machining hours. Machining hours is essentially where you're doing double-barrel for an actual ejector, and not all single shots have ejectors. Some of them just have extractors. But for ejectors, for double barrel, you have to basically take a very thin, small piece of metal, heat treat it, and then cut away for it into the receiver itself, the upper of the barrel assembly. Hmm. Okay. You'll find them on the more expensive ones, like uh, Sour, Blazer, uh, Benelli, well, Franke these days, because they've moved almost all of the double barrel to Franke. Uh, Beretta. But you're not going to find that on, say, like a Yield Is, which the Yield Is shotguns are good, but you're just not going to, you're not going to get an ejector. You're going to get an extractor. Oh, there's a letter. Yeah, see, for me, my uh, only double barrel I have is actually an old J.C. Higgins from the 50s, so it kind of makes sense it doesn't. We're good. Mentioned. You know, I've not shot it that much, but from what little I have shot of it, it's uh, been quite fun at the very least. Although, uh, shooting sporting clays, ladies and gentlemen, or shooting trap, and it's not gay, um, is something that, it's an interesting experience. If you're used to just shooting paper, you're probably going to suck at it for a while. Uh, as for me, I've sucked at it for, like, ever. Because hitting a moving target is not an easy prospect at all. Because uh, you got to actually lead it. you got to know how to do that. And I just have not done it nearly as much as I should have, but it's just because I kind of suck. And hello, Hoodie Man 27. Uh, well, I and, yeah, leading targets is tough. Soviet space program and have to survive again. 
The only way that could work is like if the uh, Soviets somehow created a Orion Drive ship and landed it on there, but that would be like the most obvious thing to find. Because it's literally a nuke going off. Yeah, the super shotgun is pretty OP. But go on. Normally, even a standard ship would be actually pretty darn easy to find on a background of negative 29 Kelvin. Trap shooting is a whole different beyond game for paper shooting. Takes more skill, and it does. And yeah, even if they like uh, run to ground, you'd still be able to see the ship landing, though. So that's the interesting thing about the uh, solar system. We actually know a decent amount of what's going on in it. So the whole idea of like aliens like sneaking up on on Earth is not that realistic. Not unless they have some sort of technology, which you know. Number one, like this the stealth ships in Star Trek. The only reason that worked for them is because it's, you know, therm optic camouflage. The the big part being therm thermal. Spotting you know it, something even so much as two degrees. It's stupid crazy easy when your background is negative 29 Kelvin. And also, let's be reasonable, Star Trek is not particularly well versed on the sciences. Uh, no, but they, they do get some things right. They get a lot wrong, but they get a few things right. Uh, let's see, one shot reload weapons. Doesn't play so fast as classic Doom. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what... Uh, maybe something a little better than the NX-01. Just saying. It's not a bad ship design, even if it is really just an Akira flipped upside down. I still kind of liked Enterprise. I mean, it wasn't that. It got good in the fourth season, and then of course they immediately canceled it. And now what do we have? Michael Burnham. Ugh. Mike Burnham. Uh, let's see. Now, when it comes to Enterprise, though, the books continued on, uh, up to the point where the Enterprise literally got retired. And Captain Archer did eventually become president of the Federation. What's TV, the quote-unquote gift that keeps on giving. Uh, NASA made a hyperdrive, I bet. And so, like, I can't. I, I don't picture NASA doing anything for less than eight trillion dollars because it's all a bunch of waste. Well, yes and no. There is a lot of graft there, but that being said, the scientists at NASA try to do their best with what they have. Um, I mean, we've got teleportation taken care of. Problem is, we can only teleport about one proton at a time. Yeah, I guess the shuttle's still faster. It kind of sucks the space shuttle has long since been retired. Not only has it been retired, but most people don't even remember the names of these things anymore. It's like, I was telling somebody about uh, a book called Footfall. I've mentioned this a lot, because Footfall is a really good book, where uh, aliens invade and eventually humanity makes an Orion Drive spacecraft. Spoiler alert! And uh, the shuttles are actually used as parasite fighters. And, uh, to you say Parasite Fighters to sound really- holy crap! To sound really hard SF. You can't just say Fighter, because that's not cool enough. Oh, the frame rate is really tanking here. It's like, it's just struggling to render that bloody Hell Knight. But yeah, the Space Shuttles are used as, like, uh, fighters. Which, I'm not sure how accurate that is. It's still cool, though. Uh, and the first shuttle to be destroyed? Now, this book was written in the 1980s, by the way. The first space shuttle to be destroyed was the Columbia. Oof. And the next one was the Challenger. So, yeah. Most people don't remember even what happened to the Columbia. Higher go no, Nagy. But some remember what happened to the Challenger. Yeah, that was even longer ago. And uh, we got the Star Trek. Uh, you might not have seen some of the better episodes of Star Trek. There's a lot of episodes to see, so if all you saw were the crap ones, like Season 1 TNG, yeah, I can see why. Well, this would never happen, but would a Soviet world takeover recently happen if things are horribly wrong? Uh, yeah, There's not enough Russians for that. 
you gotta remember, a world takeover requires a lot of troops, and there's, you know, the thing about the Wolfenstein, there's not enough Germans for that, and so there's not enough Russians, even if they were literally just screwing 24-7, there's not enough of them to realistically take over a good chunk of the country. Now, you know, the whole concept of a Red Dawn scenario is not going to happen either. Just the only because way it could happen is if they basically somehow this is going to be strange, this is going to be weird, this is going to be Hideo Kojima levels of bat guano goofy. They would have to launch stealth nukes at almost all key imp places of the all key important centers of the U.S. barring Cheyenne Mountain because they just have no way to bust that. So yeah, they would basically have needed a Metal Gear. Oh, Pretty I much. remember. There one. Not to say yeah, they, that's why I called it Hideo Kojima Bat Guano Goofy. It's <laughs> you would need a Metal Gear to take care of that. You would need several. And thankfully, their uh, science and technology divisions weren't particularly amazing due to, well, you know, massive amounts of corruption due to communism. Uh, but that being said, this level right here, or this area right here, is going to tank. Because we actually get introduced to a new enemy, and that enemy is basically kind of like a mancubus, but with a TV for a face. I'm not even joking. And when he shows up, he's really powerful. But he just completely tanks the frame rate. Like it, it the frame rate just dies. It it just, it just uh, rocket launcher is picked. Sounds like it's sneezing. <laughs> Still trying to watch through Voyager. It isn't. Well, yeah, Voyager isn't particularly good. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's uh, yeah. I can see why you'd find it boring. DS9 really was ahead of its time. Uh, when it Voyager is the popcorn trick. You throw it on, grab some popcorn, and just chill. You're not going to get as invested in it much generally as you will the other other series. Even TOS is a bit more engaging than that. TOS actually has held up remarkably well over the years. No, yeah, barring the fight with the Gorn, yeah. Well, you kind of, you kind of got to ignore that. Oh okay. no, I embrace it. He enjoyed the cheese, my friend. Oh crap, he's gonna show up here. I think he, I think he just spawned in. In tech, uh, a Metal Gear is a battle mech. The only difference is a Metal Gear is a nuclear capable platform. Alright, there's the frame rate tanker. As you can see, I think we've got... Actually, this thing it didn't take nearly as bad as I thought it would. Still though, there's a way you can actually make the frame rate go like literally slideshow. I used to do this actually back in the day. Uh, I would basically just gather up all the boxes and build a barricade, and that guy would and, and that guy would just kind of like like butt up against the barricade because he what didn't have his AI would not allow him to like blow it down or anything, and it would literally just it would be a slideshow. You could actually get Halo One to turn into a slideshow as well if you just keep bashing the elite and making more and more or a dead elite. If you bash a dead elite, eventually you will have bashed out so much blood that the frame rate will just tank to, like, single digits. Yeah, it's because you essentially put so many decals, but nobody back then thought, hey, maybe we should have an upper limit of decals. Which was a bad move. I guess people like me exist. Uh, yeah, I've seen that Locked and Loaded show, and I also saw the Mail Call show back when it used to be on. God bless you, Arlie Ernie. Yeah. Said he, uh, Sadly, he is no longer with us. Died, I think, in 2016, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, all the good ones are shuffling it off. Uh, let's okay, see. Okay, Tech, uh, a Metal Gear really isn't a frontline battle unit. It, it, compared to a battle mech from Mech Warrior, it's like saying, okay, here's a catapult. Now face down a Mad Cat. Mad Cat's going to mop the floor with you. Yeah, basically a Metal Gear is just like a movable missile silo of sorts. Now, speaking of which, I, I actually forgot to do this the other day. I need to actually look at those Mech Assault games for the Xbox. Or was it... I don't know if that was Mech Assault or Mech something. 
Yeah, it's uh, Mech Assault 1 and 2 for the original Xbox. They're apocryphal, they're non-canon, but they're a lot of fun. There's so much I need to explain, but we don't have much time. Yeah, I need Do you know how much those things cost? Is oh, they're actually pretty in? cheap, because there's so many of them made. Alright, I need to look at those after the stream. Walking Deathmobile. <laughs> also, she really needed to pick some better glasses. Just saying. You're gonna say, they look like safety glasses. It's like, it doesn't sound that crazy, you know, McNeil. I've been fighting, you know, fucking demons the entire, well, the entire day, I guess, is how long this game takes. I just fought a demon with a TV for a face who tried to do his best cyber cane impersonation. This is not crazy. It's like, you know, you got a hell artifact? Why wouldn't you take it back to hell? I mean, don't you have any hobbies? Yes, that is Jennifer Hale. You know, it used to be I didn't even know who she was until I did the Mass Effect review, which I need to do a re-review of at some point. Oh, poor Mass Effect. The first version of that actually came out before Mass Effect 3. No, it came out before Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect 3 had just come out. And I was like, I'm hoping that Bioware does not continue on like it has with Mass Effect 3. Removing all the RPG elements. Oh my god, then Mass Effect Andromeda. How little I knew then. Because, like, Mass Effect 3 wasn't bad. But it was barely an RPG. There were two dialogue options. Asshole or Paragon. That was it. Used to be you had a little more choice than that. And now I guess in Mass Effect Andromeda you don't even have that. I have not played that game yet. But I'm sure it's particularly terrible. That's awful. Your, your choices are dumb, yes. Angry and dumb, yes. Uh. It's like. That's what happens when you go SJ dub, I suppose. Now, the Mass Effect and Drop in a concept was something that I kind of picked up on. Well, the idea. Before it was even Mass Effect and Drop it, it was just an unnamed sequel. I was like, okay, the only way they're going to do this is if they set it in another galaxy or in the future. And so, of course, they set it in another galaxy. Although, that begs the question, though. And that's one of the bigger problems with Mass Effect in general. Uh, now, Mass Effect is a series that I like, but the science is kind of dubious here and there. And they kind of have to ignore the concept of space in general. So, you've got the Reapers, right? You know, they're killing everybody. That, that makes sense. Um, so why don't people just try to leave the galaxy? Unless there's literally so many Reapers that they can actually, you know, monitor every single, you know, exit point from the galaxy. Which, I think it would probably take more resources than the galaxy actually holds to build that many Reapers. Um, if you know the Reapers are coming, why not just evacuate as many people as possible? So, like, realistically, at some point, somebody could... The Reaper concept is cool until you really think about it, and it kind of falls apart. Eh, I was never a Mass Effect guy. I played them, but the whole time I'm thinking, it's like, I'll go return to Star Control 2, thanks. Uh, yeah, the, and not believing that the Reapers exist, you know. Honestly, Mass Effect would have been better without the Reapers. See, for me, I've always wanted yet another Knights of the Old Republic, and that was the closest thing I got. The absolute closest. Because, like, how many sci-fi RPG... Well, only the first game in Mass Effect was really an RPG, but how many sci-fi RPGs are there really? That someone such as myself who does not like top-down games that much would want to play. It's like, there's five of them, I think. Yeah, it's very limited. Um, it's either that or you're going back to the old school days, the 1980s, 1990s, with you know, Starflight 1 and 2 and Star Control 1 and 2. That's it. Yeah, but see, that wouldn't really count for me, just because I don't want to be stuck in a fighter all day. You're not. You're stuck in capital class ships. Oh, well, even then, you know. Crap, I am so dead. There was actually 
a Russian RPG that was released around 20... 2008, I think. That purported to be like Elder Scrolls, but sci-fi. Uh, I've never actually played it. I don't remember what it was called, but it was supposed to be something like that. Uh, let's see. Dismiss that claim. KOTOR 1 versus KOTOR 2. Now that's hard. That's mm, hard. Depends. We're talking console, KOTOR 1. If we're talking PC with patches, KOTOR 2. Yeah, I could go with that. Although I still liked the console version of KOTOR 2 a little more than KOTOR 1, just in terms of story. Even yeah, if it didn't have an ending. Unfinished. You see, I was able to ignore that. Because I just like the characters and the concepts so much more, but... Then again, Nice of the Old Republic 1 still was quite good in its own right. Only like two points less than, say, uh, KOTOR 2. Now, speaking of which, I, of course, have... Uh, uh, both on every platform... Both on both platforms. I just love being able to show the games off. I actually got this, or this one here, uh, just a couple months ago. Knights of the Old Republic won. I wonder how many people that one game. Ugh, that's a weird way of saying that. It's like I was. It's like my dialogue was written by Hideo Kojima. Okay. Waiting, huh? How many people were. I can't even say it right. Uh, essentially, Knights of the Old Republic won really introduced a great many people to the EU. That's the best I got. I'm still. I'm actually getting kind of tired, so I might actually wrap this up in a few minutes. So I can't uh, even talk about. No go. EU. I wish I could say that was my introduction to EU. My introduction to EU was literally working, you know, for Namco and doing side work for Books a Million at the time. So, of course, I'm buying Star Wars books. Right now, I'm actually listening to uh, Rogue Squadron and. Well, the first book of Rogue Squadron. And, you know, this is something I was also talking about at work the other day as well. Reading a real book is very different from reading, you know, just a uh, self-published EPUB off of Amazon. And it's like, it really sucks that a lot of these real writers, you know, don't really, well, write anymore, or anything they do write is kind of crap. Because when you actually have a book written by a real writer, it's actually really good. You know, with characters and plot and things of that nature. It's like Rogue Squadron. They'll talk about, you know, some of these uh, technological concepts. They'll give some of the tech specs about the, uh, you know, X-Wing here and there. But, you know, it's mostly character interaction and things of that nature. Whereas a lot of these, you know, self-published things, they'll go on and on about the ship and things of that nature. And they don't have characters. They just have, you know, Space Captain Man. And he kind of does the space captain stuff. And that's it. Well, the problem is that sci-fi and fantasy writing, as in terms of the publishers, if you ever go to the writer's conventions, it's really politicized. I, like You think what we're seeing in video games and tabletop games and all that's bad? Oh, you have no idea. It, it's uh, going to get worse if things are left unchecked. And you know it's going to get worse. Because... We live in, as they say today, the clown world. And I don't I don't suspect that it's gonna actually change anytime soon. Cause these people are nuts. Yeah, there is sadly no peak insanity. This is gonna be an ongoing war until either they finally relent or, in, or such small numbers that they are ridiculed constantly, or we're all gonna be facing down another Stalin-esque future. It's uh, not going to be good. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry too much about that. I mean, they might try it, but it's like, wouldn't they have to, you know, like, lose weight and, you know, learn how to shoot and things of that nature? It's that, oh, they're not the threat. The threat is, you know, globalists and, you know, their forces. Uh, I know nothing. SJW. I know the nothing. The SJWs are nothing, but, you know, uh, there is an entire world which can, you know, be I, paid for. I worship Google, all hail, um, Google guy, whatever his name is, and Jeff Did Bezos. Did you just assume their gender? Yes. 
speaking of which, there was something quite hilarious I read the other day. Um, evidently some SJW got really pissed off when the comment was made that men and women can have kids. They can procreate with one another. A strange concept. Darth Maul times two. No, you would not want it to be the Mary Universe, Turok Fire Seed. They're just as bad, but from a different, but from a different angle. I have the not only seen... difference in the Mirror Universe is, you know, the, the art of the well-sculpted and well-trimmed goatee is a lot more preferable to the unkempt, you know, bird's nest beards that they tend to like so much. Yeah, you, it's kind of weird that the SJW actually has, you know, like a phenotype at this point. Which is kind of strange to me, but whatever. Invulnerability Hunter. So, as we all know, electric electricity is invulnerable. To what? I'm not entirely sure. Now, I forget exactly. Do I just shoot him? I'm assuming I do. Yeah, he's actually taking damage. But yeah, the Mary Universe is actually kind of dumb when you think about it. And it's one of those universes that really shouldn't work. Because... Let's be reasonable. If everyone is just betraying one another, how exactly is anything done? I mean... It's, uh, it's very much like our very own universe. Yeah, there's betrayals constantly, but here in this universe, it's usually more subtle betrayal. Oh, there it is. Run! More political machinations as opposed to, ah, here's a knife in your back. Well, it's kind of like implied that, like, everyone betrays everyone, so my thought goes to something a bit more mundane than, like, a Starship Captain. It's like, what if you're, like, a sanitation engineer, like, uh, apprentice? Do you kill, like, your boss to, like, advance? You must kill your boss with his own mop if you want a promotion. Yeah, you say that like a joke. That could be how that actually works. Well, if you can kill your boss with a mop, you're a dangerous SOB, so it would make sense. Well, you can definitely tell that Star, uh, Star Trek was getting a bit politicized around 2008 or so. It was something I was able to ignore then, but it's pretty obvious now just where that writer's po po politics lie. Yeah, laid light, something like that. Because they mentioned a uh, George II in the mid tw or the early 21st century, and we all know who that was. We all know who that was. Like really. You gonna tell me that was the same in the Mary Universe too? One of the things that was actually kind of interesting about uh, the original depiction of the Mary Universe uh, was that everything was kind of the same, but like a darker version thereof. Like the Mary Universe had been, you know, like evil since like the very beginning of the universe's formation. Like Shakespeare was different, the Bible was different, all kinds of stuff like that. Like, it still, god damn it, existed, but it was all completely different. Uh, let's see. That you need to be, have a reason to assassinate someone. Yeah. In the Mary Universe 2, Flock said that Shakespeare was equally grim and. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he can be, but that being said, you know, you have the taming of the shrew, which is rather comedic. This would probably be extra evil in the Mary Universe. So, the Mary Universe version of the Disney Star Wars films. Would they actually... It would actually be good. Yeah. Or like Kylo Ren... Is... Well, no, but then you gotta remember, that means that Kylo Ren has to be the main character then. He wouldn't also have his te tem temper tantrums. Nor would he have that really goofy mask. Actually... Wait, you mean the actual mask? You mean his face? Both. I mean, Remember, like, goatees. Uh, that's true. It might make him look a little less, um... A little Nitch. less... Yeah, there you go. And one of these days, I'm gonna have to actually watch those movies. Just so I can, you know, give my own thoughts on them, but... I cannot take that guy seriously, though. It's like... What, what were they thinking, other than just social justice? Because... They weren't. It was just social justice. It's like, why? 
Why would you cast an actor that looks like that? If you're gonna, if you want somebody that the fangirls are going to, you know, vibrate over, why not just get the guy who played Loki? At least he actually, you know, looks like he has a spine. Crap, 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 crap. But why that guy? He looks like somebody who should be in Harry Potter. Well, it makes sense because they, you know, the second banana villain is evil Ron Weasley. Yeah, they need to actually have a little more, you know, dignity than Kylo fucking Rin. Hey, you know, Shenzon at least had some dignity. Not much, but he had some. And hey, it was a very young Tom Hardy. And yes, that was Tom Hardy, believe it or not. This is a substantially easier boss fight than the uh, Hell Time guy. As for the arcade game Berserk, yes, very much worth it. Uh, one of my favorite arcade games of all time. If you want a good follow up to it, uh, you've got the N64 version of Robotron. You've got the original Robotron, and those those hold up really well. Berserk. There's also Frenzy. Yeah, you know, I put this. Can I go, on? go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I was gonna say like Berserk, you know, that is a game from like what 1980, I think. 81, yeah. Yeah, it actually still is quite fun to play, even if the graphics are pretty basic. Its sequel Frenzy is still very good as well. The CPU goddess. Yeah, but I'm with you, Vulcan. I don't know what the CPU goddess is supposed to be. I don't think yeah, that could be talking like uh, Butobi CPU, but uh, I'm not going to go there. Just don't don't Google that. Yeah, that'd probably be a bad idea. Where's What's Star that? Wars? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's all you. I was going to say, where's Star Wars character? That's a good. That's a good question. Uh... True Star Wars or Disney Soy Wars? Well, assuming Soy Wars is non-canon, which I'm going to assume it's non-canon. Well, you can't. You know. You cannot cosplay as a Star Wars character in the frigging Star Wars park that Disney has set up. And there's absolutely no references to any non-Disney-made Soy Wars characters. So there's no Luke, there's no Darth Vader, there's no nothing. That seems, um, unwise. But... That's Disney. <laughs> that's... yeah. So wait, if I showed up in a Star Trek costume, that would be good, but if I sh showed up... If you showed up in a Star Trek costume, they would probably boot you anyway. Wow. Because, well... They'll boot you after four hours, any no matter what. Uh, see, I've never wanted to go to Disney World or Land, and I pretty much still don't. It would take a very interesting circumstance to actually make me... voluntarily go to one of those places. Let's see, biggest thing in recent years, yeah, well, SJWs seem to have more power than they should. No, it's the fact that they've weaseled their way through, you know, since the 1970s into important places. And the thing is, they don't actually make up the majority. They're mostly in the urban centers. And even then, it's a case of, they're not that many, they're just exceptionally loud. No, that always seems to be the way. The worst Star Wars character, uh, uh, the worst real character, I guess, is the best question. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna go with Prince Hezor. I don't know, I kinda liked him. Yeah, he's okay, but at his, at his worst, he's not that great. When he's, you know, when he's well written, yeah, it's fine. Uh, they did kinda make him a little bit of a Mary Sue in that Coruscant Nice trilogy, but I think the most annoying character also came from that trilogy as well. Uh, I forget the character's name, uh, but basically he's the son of a really cool character. He's a, it's a very obscure novel-only character that no one cares about. Basically, the Coruscant Knight trilogy takes place almost immediately after uh, Order 66. Uh, it's got some fan-favorite characters, but also the son of another fan-favorite character that showed up in Darth Maul Shadowhunter. Who, spoiler alert, got killed by Darth Maul, as you would expect. 
the biggest problem with his son, though, is his son's a complete asshole that basically loses access to the Force because he's such an indecisive little prick that the Force literally just gives up on him a little bit. Also, he treats uh, a droid character, I-5Q, like complete crap, even though I-5Q is clearly sapient, but whatever. Ultimately, that was one of the most disappointing characters I actually ever read in the Star Wars universe, and yeah, he's my most hated one. Uh, we don't know how he died, but here's hoping Darth Vader just, you know, uh, dropped a bomb on him. No final epic lightsaber duel. He literally just got bombed. That's a for force joke. For I was about to say fork choke, but that would that would be hilarious using the force to you know force push a choke, <laughs> so a fork into somebody's throat. That would be brutal. A well-deserved fate. Also in that book, uh, or that that trilogy, not in the uh, first book, but in the third one, uh, Darth Vader gets high on shrooms. I'm not even joking. Uh, space shrooms. Uh, beats current Vader, who's stuck, you know, doing nothing but killing fangirls. Well, you know what they did to Darth Vader? They turned him into the fucking Joker, is what they did. Okay, he, he's basically the Joker now. Complete with a Harley Quinn that, if, that eventually is killed. I mean, it's like, really? Thankfully, it's only a one-episode thing, but yes, they, they tried to... They basically tried to adapt Mad Love into a one-off Star Wars comic book, which... While funny, kind of went like a fart in an empty elevator. No one cared. See, like for me, it would have pissed me off if I actually read it, just because the idea of Darth Vader killing, you know, somebody who is effectively harmless is completely outside of his character. Vader is opposed no, no. to... He had a... It was not outside of Darth Vader's character. I mean, he's being approached by a nurse who's obviously filthy, obviously mentally unhinged, and remember... Darth Vader has killed people for seeing his face. He's killed a lot of people for seeing his face. And this woman just charges into his sanctum as he's in his meditation pod. Yeah, it, it fits his character, but the, the entire comic is just not that well written. Yeah. So I always thought of Darth Vader as more of like a... Uh, he had some sort of warrior's honor. He wouldn't kill an opponent weaker. You know, sort of like a coronate kind of thing. Well, an older school kind of coronate kind of thing. And I did not need to read that, Tim McAndrew. I'm not going to repeat that. Because I look over there and it's like, oh my god, I did not need to know that about Chris nope. Chan. Oh, the nope. <laughs> uh, and see, thankfully, you guys, the fans watching this, um, you'll get to see that. Oh, yeah. you get to see that. You, you know what we're talking about. It's like, um... Have I, I have streamed blood. Just uh, do a basic search. You'll find it. Legacy canon, EU and AU. Yeah, it could work. Ex expanded universe, awful universe. Disney is the awful universe. <laughs> and that works. You know, it's kind of funny, though, when you look at the uh, New Wars compared to the New Trek. They both suffer from the same problems. Of Let's, let's assume they didn't have any SJW crap. You know, let's assume Ray doesn't even exist for a moment. And you basically have the Star Wars equivalent to what they did with Spock. Now, herein lies the biggest problem with both of those universes. Irrespective of any SJW stuff, you know, New Trek is just so skin deep. It's just a Trek shell. You know, none of the technology really makes any sense or is in any way consistent. None of the stories really are in any way consistent either. And, That's know, what I call Tino. T-I-N-O. Trek in name only. Well, it's not even that. It's just more of a base concept. You can say the same thing about, you know, New Wars. None of that has any real internal consistency at all. You know, one minute you've got the First Order who has, like, five guys. The next minute they've got Star Killer Base, which literally makes no sense in any way, shape, or form. The time it would take to build that thing would basically... The idea It would of, take a decade, at the very absolute least. And that's assuming you have armies of millions. Uh, and even then, it's like, okay, you can destroy three planets at once. What's the point of this? Uh, it's it's kind of like, you know, the uh, transwarp transporter from uh, In the Darkness. It's like, why is this? why does this exist? 
how does it exist? How do you go from you can now do trans warp beaming? And I, I actually I got even more problems with the uh, Trek Eleven anyway. It's like you know Scotty's like you could beam something a hundred miles. Really? We just saw him beam something a lot further than a hundred miles, Scotty. You know they were doing that in Enterprise. Shouldn't you know that? <sighs> Alternate universe, alternate off universe does work. Totally forgot we're talking on a YouTube video. Yep. You know, I don't know why everyone really likes uh, Quentin Tarantino anyway. He's not that uh, amazing. He's not amazing, but he does some okay directions. Uh, he's produced some important films. Now, is he my favorite director? Oh, hell no. Not even close. I guess my problem is, like, I've seen a lot of his films, and I'm like, they're pretty good, but I think it just comes down to, to marketing. It's like, when you hear the name, like, oh, it's got to be good, right? like, you know, Inglorious Bastards, it was a fine film, but I didn't think it was, like, the greatest film ever put to cinema. No, he he's nowhere near that list. To do that, he's going to have to produce something... He's going to have to produce something akin to, you know, the absolute classics. He's going to have to outdo Seventh Seal. He's going to have to outdo Citizen Kane... Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, he's going to have to just pull a miracle out of absolutely nowhere to be on that list. And yeah, I'm not really seeing that happening. Uh, Thrawn Trilogy and Dark Empire. Yep, I agree with that one. And let's see. A gray Jedi villain trying to control the light and dark side of the planet. I think there was actually a story about that. That sounds somewhat familiar. You know, my biggest problem with the Jedi just is the fact that, like, once again, let's be reasonable, how exactly would such a small force of people actually control an entire galaxy? They're not even really that powerful. That's something I'm going to mention in uh, the uh, Jedi Knight 2, or, or the Dark Forces 2 review. Uh, one, of the, one of the Dark Jedi you fight is named Bok. He's basically this hunchback Twi'lek, and I'm like, what good is this guy going to be? I mean, it's just like, what, what good is this Dark Jedi actually going... What, what purpose does he serve? A berserker? In hand-to-hand -hand combat? Okay, fine. And see, that's the thing. Jedi are seen so inconsistently as well. It's like, okay, one minute they're just swinging their laser sword, next minute they can, like, pull a starship out of orbit. It's like, okay, I guess that's... Why, 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 don't, why don't you start with that? Why, why the laser sword? I get because it's cool, but it's like... Yeah, it's... that's the one line I never liked about the... That unfortunately stuck since the prequels, is laser sword. It's never a laser. <laughs> I know, I just say that to be as a pejorative. I know, it's just... Even Lucas got it wrong. So like... Of course, then again, if it was a, like actual light, would it be clear? Well, not clear, but invisible, I should say. Oh no, there's different there's different things that could cause you know, light pollution, but a Citizen Kane reboot named Citizen Kane. It would never fly in Hollywood. They would want to change it and you know hire Jar Jar Abrams to direct it. It's yeah. Bad idea. Uh, popsicle lightsaber. Samurai wizard. They're not really like samurai though. Well, uh, sort of. I mean, so a lot of the ideas are drawn from Samurai. A lot of the ideas are definitely drawn from Akira Kurosawa. Actually, you know, it depends on which uh, which era we're looking at. But yeah, you're right. Because the old Republic Jedi are pretty much stand-ins for uh, uh, Samurai. Right up, uh, right up until the very end of the Republic. In fact, the end of the Republic... They act a lot like the, uh, well, I'm gonna talk if I can leave. They act a lot like the samurai did, uh, during the, uh, Meiji Restoration. Because that's what they were based off of. Crap, 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 crap. Even the cinematography that Lucas employed in episode 4, 5, and 6 was taken from Akira Kurosawa movies such as Ron. Right? So you go from that to some idiot throwing a tantrum because a droid stole a freighter. <laughs> you know, not having known that was going to happen, 
you know, it's like, okay, he's gonna pull out the lightsaber and kill the guy. That's, that would make sense. No, nope, he's just gonna cut up his computer because? I don't, I don't, that's something that still just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, somebody got paid for that. Somebody, somebody got paid for the awful fight scenes. You know, I haven't actually seen a few those. people got paid for those. Trust me, you have yet to see the worst. <laughs> uh, it's like... I mean, I'll, I'll be forgiving to some of the fight scenes. Like, you know, episode one. There's a section where Ray Park would have cut himself in half. There's the, the amazing whiff kick, which was done because Ray kicked a little too high and would have given, <laughs> given a certain actor a concussion. But I'm forgiving to that. But I can't be forgiving to the fight scenes in Soy Wars. They are ten shades of absolute awful. Uh, also, uh, Carrie Fisher got old. I was very surprised by that. I guess I shouldn't be, but damn. Jedi Fallen Order looks like a slower force unleashed. We shall see. Just what that looks like. Because I do intend to give it a try. Evidently, Chris Avalon is going to be doing the story, so maybe it won't be utter crap. Marine, come in. Uh, showdown a little Tokyo. You know, it doesn't sound that bad, actually. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am exhausted, so I'm going to call it a day. Uh, let's see, we've gone a little longer than usual. That's the problem with having to get up at 5 in the morning. Your brain just starts shutting down. <sighs> so, uh, Rain, you got any final thoughts on life, issue dubs? Go back and enjoy the original Star Wars and crack open the old books. There's a lot of good there, and while they're not in current production, there's plenty of them available. And it definitely offsets and shows that there actually is better out there, that you don't have to deal with the mundanity and insanity of current media. Exactly. Just remember, read the books. Well, so long as they're not written by SJW, SJW writers. But in any event, I'm Daryl Watts. I'm wishing you good... Um, Rogue Squadron 1. Whatever makes you happy.